All right, so let's talk a little bit about Alice experiment safety. Specifically, in this video, I'm going to talk about the safety approval process. I'll show you how to access and navigate the safety form system. And then I'll provide some advice about filling out the safety form. Although each person's project and safety will be a little bit different, there are some common mistakes that we would like you to avoid. Okay, so let's start by talking about the safety approval process. After you have filled out the details in the safety form, you are going to submit it, and then it will be reviewed by your teacher and the safety committee. If there are some problems, it will not be approved, and you will be asked to revise your safety form. After you fix any problems or made any necessary corrections, you will submit the safety form again, and then it will be reviewed by your teacher and the safety committee. Hopefully this time, there won't be any problems and it will be approved. Once it's approved, you can start your research project. And I can't emphasize this enough, but safety is really important. Therefore, submission and approval of the safety form is required to receive a final grade for your ALICE paper. If you have any questions or trouble while you're working on your safety form, ask your teacher or visit the ALICE lab. All right, so next, let's look at the safety form system. And the details that you need to access this page will be provided by your ALICE teacher. But I'm gonna start here at the login page and so in order to log in, you need to type in your student number and your common ID. Most of you should know this information, but if you do not, then please ask your teacher or the Alice Lab for some help. Okay, so I've logged into the system and I'm going to start by clicking on Begin Submission. This is gonna take us to the submission form and so let's take a look at the type of information that you need to write, as well as look at some examples. Um, some of the examples uh, have a lot of text, but I'm not going to read it out loud for you. It does contain important information, so I suggest that you pause the video and read it yourself. Okay, so the first part of the submission form asks you to write a summary of your project. It should be written in full sentences and should include information such as the research question or topic, the hypothesis, the variables that you plan to investigate, and how you plan to collect the data. So let's take a look at an example. And one of the first things I want you to notice is that you need to write everything in English and Japanese. And so here's a nice example. And I think based on this summary, it was easy for the teacher and the safety committee to understand the research topic. They could understand what kind of data would be collected as well as how the data would be collected. Um, there is one problem, however. This research requires human participants, and the researcher forgot to check this box. One of the common mistakes we see is that students forget to check the box when their project involves human participants. Okay, the next part of the submission form asks you to write the kind of materials that you need and where you will get them. This example was easy for the teacher and safety committee to evaluate. It was formatted nicely as a list, and the connection between part A and part B is clear. Next, let's look at part three, safety measures for hazardous activities. As you can see, the boxes are empty. Now, this was a misunderstanding by the researcher. They thought that there was no danger when conducting survey research, and Safety may seem more obvious when we work in chemistry or biology, right? A chemical could catch on fire, or you could cut yourself on broken glass. But what kind of safety should we care about with survey research? Well, one point is to be careful about collecting 
personal data or personal information from your participants. Okay, and we should also be careful about the types of questions we ask in a survey because some questions might cause distress to the participant. But as I've said a few times in this video, if you are not sure about something, ask your teacher or the Alice Lab. The next part of the submission form deals with waste. Now, even if your project does not generate any waste, you need to clearly state that in your form. In this example, there were two problems, however. The first problem is that the Japanese and English were typed into the wrong boxes, and the second problem is that the English and Japanese were not consistent. Okay, and finally, you need to indicate where you will do your experiment. You are limited to doing the experiment at your home or on the Komaba One campus. At the time this video was created, we were still in the COVID-19 pandemic. So, depending on the situation, uh, there might be other restrictions or those restrictions might have been relaxed. Talk to your teacher, the Alice Lab, if you're unsure. So, at the bottom of the form, you will see a few buttons. If you press cancel without saving, then everything you typed will be deleted and you will have to type it again. So, be very careful with that button. The save button will save everything that you have written. As you're filling out the form, I recommend that you press the save button after you finish each part of the form. That way, if you suddenly lose internet connection, then you don't have to start your form uh, from the beginning again. Uh, the save and quit button will also save everything, but it will exit the submission form. So once you are ready to submit the form, then press the green submit button. Your teacher and the safety committee will be notified so that they can check it. If everything in the form is okay, then you will receive an email letting you know that it has been accepted. By the way, if you realize after submitting that you made a mistake, you can click this button which says undo submit and you will be able to edit your safety form. From the home screen, you can also click the undo submit button if you realize that you made a mistake. However, please be careful because the undo submit button is only available for 10 minutes after you have submitted your safety form. So what if your safety form is rejected? Well, then you will receive an email like this one letting you know that your safety form was rejected. And for your convenience, you will be able to click on this link to edit your safety form. This will take you back to the safety form system. So you want to click here on amend submission and this will take you back to the submission form. If we scroll down a bit, we can see that a summary of activities has been highlighted in red, which means that there was a problem in this section. And down here, we can see that there was a comment from the professor. And by reading these comments, you will know specifically what was the problem, and you will be able to decide how to fix the problem. So. Uh, this is the example I showed you earlier, so it has the same mistakes that I already showed you. So let me go ahead and fix them really quickly. Okay, so when you have fixed the problems, then just like before, uh, hit the submit button. And hopefully this time the safety form will be approved.